Welcome back to GP Fans testing special from Bahrain. Day two of testing is in the books, kind of. And I'm delighted to say that joining me to recap day two's action is the man out there for GP fans at the Bahrain International Circuit, Mr. Sam Hall, a very hot and bothered man after another busy day around the track, I presume, mate. Oh, it's uh, it's warm, it's sunny, and very, very dusty today, actually. Very dusty. Delightful. So the car's struggling for grip, but there's plenty of firepower, or at least fire, on track at the moment if you're driving a Williams today. Yeah, if you're a Williams, it's not been a good day. Um, I mean, Nicholas Latifi didn't get any running this afternoon. After in the morning session, his brakes caught fire. It melted through his suspension, which pitched him into a spin. And then, weirdly... There was an explosion at the back of the car as um, as a marshal went to go and fix it. We're laughing, but I mean, it's if speaking to Nicholas afterwards, he said that he thinks it was a tire that burst off the rim because of the heat, because of the pressures that went through it, and obviously that's with the smoke that was around from the brakes that just made it look worse than it was. So. An explosion is never good. Fire is never good. Williams are doing their due diligence to make sure that whatever happened will not happen again. And that's why they didn't run this afternoon. They didn't want to rush the job. Um, and to be fair, that's the only decision they could make. Well, it's good that Williams is going safety first with their brake issues. Uh, what about McLaren? Because they're having brake issues aplenty and they're still down a driver as well with Danny Ricciardo absent once again from today's session. Yeah, Ricardo. Um, that was news that broke this morning before, in the small hours for those in the UK. Um, the, it broke this morning that he was still feeling unwell, so Lando was going to be in the car for at least the morning session. That then became the full day. Um, I will add that they are testing him for COVID re uh, repeatedly just to make sure it's not that. Um, and the last I heard um, from Andreas Seidel this evening was that a doctor had been looking after Daniel, that they had been getting assessments of him across the day um, and into the evening. So he's hopeful again, as they said, they were hopeful that he would get in the car this afternoon. He's hopeful that he will get in the car tomorrow. But if push comes to shove, I'm sure they'd rather have him fully fit than for the uh, for the season opener next weekend, don't forget, than have him 50% fit now and then risk something later down the line obviously we don't know what he has but the on track for McLaren wasn't really much better what little of it there was um, because Lando's been suffering with brake problems all day brake, brake issues, overheating brakes they think it could be something to do with the new wheels um, but as no one else other than Williams appears to be suffering major issues with that and all the wheels are the same this year, it's it, it, it's a bit of a stretch. It's a problem as well because McLaren looked really reliable in Barcelona, as did so many teams, especially on the uh, the first day or two. But to now have these problems occurring in Bahrain, that's not great with a week away from the opening race of the season. No, it's, it's really not. Um, and, I mean, this heat's what they're going to have to get used to. Yes, the problems were largely during the heat of day, which you're talking FP1, FP3 time there. You're not talking the big sessions, you're qualifying, you're race. So they, they might be able to get away with it, but it's a problem that no one wants at this time. And with one day of pre-season testing left, you, you'd hope the issues would be ironed out by this point. Now, just before we jumped on, we were going to talk about Ferrari leading the timings after today and looking great once more. And they still look great, this Ferrari Scuderia that is uh, that is impressing throughout both testing sessions at the moment. But there's a new name at the top of the leaderboard, Sam, and a surprising one as well at that. Yeah, it's that hill that I was willing to die on um, all through <laughs> last year. When we said that Haas weren't developing their car at all for last year because they were putting all their eggs in the 2022 basket, and uh, it's a name we didn't even think we'd be seeing this year. Kevin Magnussen, um, in doing his extra hour that is part of Haas making up their, their four hours that they missed on Thursday morning because of matters out of their hands. Um, yeah, Kevin Magnussen has gone fastest and hands up everyone who thought he would be fastest today. I mean, his first session in that car and he's 
topping the timesheets. I know a lot of teams haven't been doing performance runs yet, but still, it's uh, welcome back, Kevin. Nikita, who? It's a it's a great moment for Kevin. It's uh, I mean, if you had been trying to get money on Kevin Magnussen even being in F1 uh, at the start of Barcelona's testing, you'd have got very long odds indeed, let alone leading a timing sheet uh, on one of these test days in Bahrain. So it's great for Haas and it's great for him to be back behind the wheel. Just finally, what about the big boys then, Sam? Because today's been a little quieter on the Mercedes front. We haven't heard much from Red Bull, aside from Max Verstappen bemoaning Drive to Survive, which I'm sure you're racing home to start binge-watching as well while you're out there, mate. Yeah, it won't be on the plane by the time I get on there, so uh, I w won't be able to do that. I'll have to wait till I'm actually home. Um, but yeah, it's been a bit of a quiet day for Mercedes, like you say, um, because Lewis Hamilton, I mean, yeah, he was fourth, but yeah, not, not really there. He was over half a second off the pace, six tenths off. And Russell's down in 13th, and you can tell how un unrepresentative this time is. He was over five seconds off the fastest. So it's a quiet day for them, um, but they're still learning this new floor. They're learning, or the side pods even, and the floor that goes with it. So they're learning all of these new parts. And I suspect tomorrow, you can never read into pre-season testing times because some people, will, like we think, Mercedes and Red Bull, will do all of their performance runs tomorrow. People like Ferrari possibly have done. We don't know that, but they possibly have. Haas, if that Kevin Magnussen time isn't a performance run, they've got something special there. Um, so, yeah, it's... Never read too much into these times because someone will look very, very clever by going, oh, I told you this. But 99% of people... We'll probably end up with a bit of egg on their face if you go, oh, hey, look, Sonoda's fastest. He's going to be the champion. Um, it could happen. So these these things could happen. It's um, But don't read into these. You're just covering your own back now. That's all you're doing. I can see what you're doing. You've been bigging up, bigging up certain drivers <laughs> throughout the last 12 months or so, and now you're starting to just cover your back just in case it doesn't happen going into this new season. Sam, uh, I know you're working very hard and we need to get you back on the live blog on gpfans.com and, of course, updating all the social media on at gpfansglobal as well, but always appreciate you taking the time out to have a chat with us, man. Good to speak to you again. Cheers. Remember, you can follow all of Sam's reporting from Bahrain. The final day of testing, of course, before the first race of the season next week on gpfans.com. And give us a little subscribe down below as well to stay up to date with all of our content here at the YouTube channel.